Signal system and communications. <laughs> what is a communications and signal systems? Glad you've asked. Are you sure about that? You should get to the point. Okay, let's begin. Here are the types of communication and signal systems. First, we have the surveillance and signal equipment. This equipment can be found in almost all establishments, from schools to malls and offices. These things, fire, smoke, and intruder detection and alarm systems, are what you call the surveillance and signal systems. In general, all signal systems require a surveillance system to process information and this will include the transmission of the data and the means of indicating the signal, either audibly, visually, or permanently on hard copy. Next, we have the audio and visual communication equipment, which includes telephone, intercom, public TV, and closed-circuit television, or the CCTV. Lastly, we have the time equipment, or the clock and program equipment. At this juncture, we will be talking about fire alarm system. What is a fire alarm? A fire alarm is a unit made of several devices, which uses visual and audio signalization to warn people about a possible fire, smoke, or carbon monoxide occurrence in the area of coverage. Fire alarms are usually set in fire alarm systems to provide zonal coverage for residences and commercial buildings. The warning signal is either a loud siren, bell, or a flashing light, or it can be include both. Some fire alarm systems use additional warnings such as sending a voice message or making a phone call. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. Please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? There are two types of fire alarm systems, automatic system and manual system. Automatic system uses detectors to trigger the alarm system, while manual system uses visual detection and the alarm is triggered by hand. Under manual system, there are non-coded manual stations and coded manual stations. Non-coded manual stations are station locations are not identifiable at the control panel when it is manually triggered. An annunciation panel, however, can be added to the system to convert each station as a non-coded indicating zone. Beyond 10 stations, coding should be considered. Let's move on to detector. Detector is a device or instrument designed to detect the presence of a particular object or substance and to emit a signal in response. Temperature sensor is an electronic device that measures the temperature of its environment and converts the input data in into electronic data to record, monitor, or signal temperature changes. The most common in the temperature detector is called the thermostat. There are two types of temperature detector, the fixed temperature unit and rate of rise unit. In fixed temperature unit, it triggers a set of contacts when a present temperature is reached. This unit is available in a one-time non-renewable design that uses a low melting alloy fusible plug. The rate of rise unit or the ROR Heat detectors operate on a rapid rise in element temperature of 6.7 degrees to 8.3 degrees Celsius. It activates when the rate of ambient temperature differential exceeds a predetermined amount. This unit may be combined with a fixed temperature unit in a single housing such as in the case of an automatic resetting unit. Detectors are rated by temperature and coverage. For example, in ordinary rooms, detectors are rated at 135 degrees Fahrenheit per 200 square feet. For kitchens, attics, and basements where ambient temperature is higher, units are rated at 190 degrees to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Second one is photoelectric detector. These detectors react to the obscuration of a light beam by smoke. They are best applied where fires produce considerable quantities of smoke and gas, such as those caused by slow-burning plastics. Third is ionization detector. These detectors operate by detecting ionized particles in the air. They do not detect fires producing heavy smoke but few particles such as alcohol and plastic fires. Photoelectric and ionization detectors are classed respectively as early warning smoke and fire detection devices. The last one is flame detectors. There are two types of flame detectors, the infrared IR and ultraviolet UV detectors. Applications are generally industrial and are highly sensitive. Control Unit or Panel The function of the control panel is to energize the audible devices such as bells, buzzers, gongs upon receipt of a signal from the detector. Other functions include shutoff of oil and gas lines, shutoff of attic fans to prevent fire spread, and turning off of lights. Most units are serviced with an emergency standby battery. The typical control functions in the fire alarm panel are non-coded systems, master-coded systems, zone-coded systems, dual-coded systems, selective-coded systems, and pre-signal systems. Non-coded systems. These are continuous ringing evacuation type alarm devices. Manual or automatic which can be zoned and identifiable by means of annunciator. Master coded systems. This system is also called the common coded or fixed coded systems and generates four rounds of code. When the code is set to ring the bells at 108 strokes per minute, the alarm is known a march time. Because of the rhythmic cadence, this alarm best applies in the rapid evacuation of a building and is frequent used in school. Zone coded systems. Manual stations are grouped by circuit into zones, which transmits to the panel and ring the zone's code on the single stroke gong or chimes, thus immediately identifying the station. Dual coded system. This system is a combination of the non coded and the zone coded system. When an alarm device operates, it initiates two different functions, an identifying coded alarm located in the maintenance office and a continuous ringing evacuation alarm for the whole building. Selective coded system. This is a fully coded system in which all manual devices are coded and all automatic devices are arranged to trip code transmitters at the panel. Pre-signal system. Fire detected in core engine room. When it is desired to alert only key personnel, a system called pre-signaling is used, where it is also selectively coded. The personnel can immediately investigate and turn on the general alarm manually. Alarm devices. Usually audible such as bells, buzzers, gongs, and horns. Most common is the AC vibrating bell and a weatherproof external bell to alert neighbors and passerby. Circuit design. A system which is usually de-energized and functions only when activated is called an open circuit system. An open circuit system which integrates a trouble light to indicate a malfunction is called a supervised system. The intrusion or burglar alarm system. The intrusion detection is similar to the fire detection system, except instead of thermal detection, devices such as metallic tape and micro and magnetic switches are used to detect door and window motion and glass breakage. Uh -huh. Just like on this movie preview, an IR laser light beam may also be used to detect movement once blocked. The sprinkler alarm. Ever seen those circular objects in the ceiling of your classroom? Those are the sprinkler alarms. 
On these devices, water flow switches are installed to monitor the flow of water in a sprinkler head. When triggered, it will trip a coded transmitter setting up a sprinkler code to show up on a sprinkler annunciator board, or also called a sprinkler alarm panel. Industrial Building Security System Number 1. Door and Exit Controls These cover electrified security door hardware that triggers an alarm when a door is opened without authorization, such as in exterior doors and doors to restricted areas. Number 2. Personnel Entry Control by use of a card reader A. The first level is by simple insertion of a card by the holder to an electric device which grants entry when a card is inserted into it for identification. B. The second level requires the encoding of a three-digit number simultaneously with the insertion of a card. C. The third level involves an attendant who compares card data through a computer screen with the person's appearance, providing a further check. And lastly, number three, watchmen's tour equipment. This type of station allows a guard to call in through an intercom and permits a general alarm to ring through operation of a key. Next is television antenna system. The system functions by amplifying the signal received by the TV antenna and by means of a special cable, distribute these amplified signals into the various wall outlets. A system with two or more outlets generally, generally needs a booster amplifier. And finally, 1.7 Sound Amplifying Systems or Public Address Systems consists of the following number one microphone to pick up the sound and convert it to an alternative electric current number two amplifiers amplifies and controls the current and number three loudspeaker converts amplified electric current back into sound much louder than the original sound entering the microphone Telephone and the Intercommunication System The intercom system comprises one or more master stations and several remote stations, one of which monitors the front door. The master station allows selective calling while remote stations operating through the masters are non-selective. Now, what is a telephone? So, according to Britannica.com, telephone is an instrument designed for the simultaneous transmission and reception of the human voice. It has become the most widely used telecommunications device in the world and billions of telephones are in use. Okay, side fact. Who invented the telephone? There are three inventors, namely Alexander Graham Bell, Antonio Meucci, and Amos Dober. These are the parts of the telephone. Okay, you're done reading? Okay, let's move on. Okay, number two, the Private Automatic Branch Exchange or PABX is based on solid state technology, thus the entire system can handle up to 500 lines and trunks. Four operator consoles and over 140 simultaneous conservation plus full intercom facilities. All occupying a cabinet of 0.6 meters by 0.7 meters by 1.8 meters. Thus, operational features of this system include boom, there is. of the telephone installation. So, it starts with a service entrance. What is a service entrance? The service connection from a pole or other outside terminal locations to a point of entrance into the building. So, the service entrance may be first, overhead, with overhead exposed wires, second, underground. With concealed underground wires and conduits, the service conduit is usually of rigid iron for electrical works, so it has a minimum size of one half inch round. So there should be a clearance of not less than six inches between telephone, service conduit, and electric conduit. Number two, protector. Protector. Generally required on residential telephone lines to protect against lightning. 
when a conduit entrance and an interior conduit system are to be installed, it is desirable to provide a cabinet to accommodate a protector, usually a metal box of the same type used in the electrical work, located as close as possible to the point of entrance, one protector is required for each pair of telephone wires entering the building. Number 3. Main Thermal Cabinet or Room The serviced wires and at the main thermal cabinet, small size wall type terminals are mounted to metal cabinets attached to or recessed in walls or columns. Large size of wall type terminals and frame type terminals should be located in rooms which are intended for the purpose and constructed of fire resisting materials. And here are the diagrams of overhead and underground service entrance. Vertical riser conduits or riser shafts. Riser conduits are used in medium size installation and consist of a series of metal cabinets called splicing cabinets aligned vertically through the building, one of each floor and connected by a vertical conduit. Riser shafts are required for very large installation and consist of a series of individual full-length interconnecting closets called splicing closets which are aligned vertically, one on each floor and each fitted with a fireproof access door. Slots on the floor forms a clear and broken opening from top to bottom of the building. Risers, whether conduits or shafts, require central locations in relation to floor area served. Buildings with large floor areas or with floors so planned so as to result in two or more distinct areas will probably need a separate riser for each area. Splicing cabinets or splicing closets permit the riser cables in the riser shafts or conduits to be spliced or interconnected to the cables or telephone wires to the various floors. Floor conduits connects the splicing closets or cabinets into the distribution terminal cabinets and to the floor ducts, wall outlets, and more. There are different types of telephone systems, single line phones, small business multiple line phones, and large business multiple line calls. For single line phones, these are basic telephones just like the ones in an average home that can be bought at an appliance store and have no additional extensions, no transfer capabilities, and are analog units that you hook up directly into a jack in the wall. These are best in home offices or businesses that do not need multiple lines. Its features include call waiting, call Your forwarding, call forwarded to an automatic voice message system. and three-way calling. During a call, call waiting lets you know that the second call is waiting. You can answer the second call without disconnecting to the first, enabling you to use your telephone without missing important calls. When call forwarding is activated, all calls made to your number are automatically forwarded to the phone number of your choice. You can turn call forwarding on and off as necessary. And using the three-way calling feature, you can either conference call with two numbers or you can transfer calls to another number. Next is small business multiple line phone. A small business that has moderate to large phone traffic will need a phone system that can handle all calls efficiently. A multiple line phone with two or more extensions depending on how many people are in the office along with the digital line hookup can manage a small office effectively. These multiple lines can be external or internal. External lines lets you communicate with your customers while internal lines enable you to communicate with your employees and colleagues. These lines become a system because they need to connect to talk with each other. And lastly, the large business multiple line calls. A business that has over 50 employees with a large number of phone calls needs a large phone system and that can hold up to hundreds of external lines with an even larger number of extensions. Through this phone system, one or more T1 lines are necessary to effectively handle the load, and the voicemail system will need a large number of ports. Analog 
When should you use analog telephone lines for your business? Analog telephone lines should be considered for small and medium-sized business that require up to 15 incoming lines. When more than 15 are required, a digital line is usually a better choice in terms of both cost and features. Digital a digital telephone line or digital trunk is a type of telephone line that carries voice or data by using digital sampling. By converting analog signals to digital, these types of trunks allow for more information to be transferred over a single connection. T1 A T1 line is a communications transmission service that uses two twisted pair of copper wires to transmit and receive data or voice traffic. This early form of data connectivity was developed by the Bell system to bring data connectivity to the vast majority of businesses. A T1 line can transmit data at a speed of 1.544 Mbps. Compared to the standard telephone lines that uses a modem to transfer voice data at a mere 56 kbps, the T1 was an important step forward in delivering high-speed connections. T1 service for small business is still utilized today for high-speed data transmission, internet access and voice, depending on the type of T1 and the configuration. PBX server stands for Private Branch Exchange, which is a private telephone network used within a company or organization. The users of PBX phone system can communicate internally and externally using different communication channels like voice over IP, ISDN, or analog. A PBX also allows you to have more phones than physical phone lines and allows free calls between users. Additionally, it provides features like transfer calls, voicemail, call recording, interactive voice menus, and call queues. Next is the control unit. A control unit is the nerve center of a phone system within your office where all of the individual lines connect and all calls get routed. While a residential phone line may be hooked up to an analog service, a small business server is usually handled digitally, with larger businesses requiring a T1 line. Depending on the size of your company and the telephone usage of your business, this will decide whether analog or digital would be best. Individual Units For each person who will have an extension in your office, an individual phone will be needed. An individual unit can have multiple lines, but depending on the number of employees your company has, each unit may not have all of the lines available to them. Everybody in the company does not need to have a phone unit that has all incoming lines available, as this could reach up to several hundred lines in a large company. IP Telephony this is the latest technology in phone systems, where your server would run through your computer network. One of the options of this is a PBX server on a disk. One of the early problems with this system is that other systems on your networks, for example, a printer, may clog up your system, causing phone calls to be missed because they cannot get through the system. This is a problem that should be fixed within the next couple of years. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. So for the first feature, call waiting or multiple lines. Uh, this feature is depending on the system that you use. Your phone may either have call waiting or multiple lines. If individual units only have one line, then call waiting is necessary to keep lines clear. Multiple lines avoid this problem as long as calls on each line can be put on hold. The second one is conference calling. Conference calling gives a person the ability to add a third party to a phone call. This gives the user the ability to hold long distance meetings without the need to have two of the parties in the same place. When two people are on the phone and a third is on hold, the third can be entered into the conversation through this service. This service can also allow the first party 
to disconnect and let the second and third parties to continue talking. So for the third one, a co-attendant. A co-attendant handles all phone calls directly before transferring the calls to extensions. Through this, a list of all employees' extensions can be given. Calls can be put on hold if all lines are busy, or could send calls to voicemail if the extension transferred to does not answer. A call attendant is set up to even play background music while callers are on hold. Fourth, hands-free calling. Hands-free or speaker phones give a person the opportunity to talk on the phone without holding the receiver. Not only giving the user the option of moving around the office while talking, but also allows for several people to hear a phone call at once. Speed dialing. This feature allows the user to keep multiple phone numbers saved, allowing one button dialing. Speed dialing is best for domestic long distance and international numbers, where additional codes must be dialed, but it is also great for numbers that are dialed constantly. So for redial, like speed dial, redial saves time by allowing you to simply press one button to make a call to the last number dialed. For caller ID, know who is calling before you pick up the phone. Caller ID will tell you who is calling by showing what phone number or extension the calling is coming from on a digital display usually within the phone unit itself. If it is important to have knowledge of outside phone numbers, make that an extra that must be on the system. For number blocks, number blocks keep employees from taking advantage of the phone. A number block will black out calls to specific area codes, such as 900 toll calls, and can keep phone calls limited to inter-office if necessary. For voicemail, for this feature, along with company voicemail on the control unit, each individual unit has its own personal voicemail. These voicemail boxes can be coded to keep other employees from hearing messages and both the control unit individual units can transfer messages directly into a mailbox. Individual voice mailboxes gives employees the ability to check their individual messages from outside of the office and also allows the employee to leave a personalized message for incoming calls. Another option to voicemail is call log, which keeps numeric log of calls you miss and allows the user to return the missed call with the press of a button. For call transfer, this feature allows calls to be sent directly to specific extensions. This way, only one phone number is needed for the company, and if there is no single person at the company to answer phones, anyone can answer the line and transfer the call to the appropriate person. It is also helpful when one person needs to speak to several people within your company. On a control unit, a night switch can be used to directly send calls to voicemail when there is no one in the office. For remote door entry, this allows the phone user to allow access to the front door from the phone with the push of a button. This is best for companies that do not want open access to their business, or one where valuables needs to be protected. For surge protection, like a computer, an electrical surge can damage a phone system, causing memory and important codes to be lost. Surge protection prevents this from happening. For battery backup, this allows the phone system to operate for a short period of time if power leaves the building. Usually, a backup will keep phone use for anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. So let's go to the last topic, the accessories. So the first one is the headsets. An option to hands-free calling is headset equipment, which allows the user to keep the conversation private without having to hold the receiver. Headsets are a health advantage as well. 
as they have also been known to decrease neck pain for users who bend awkwardly to rest the foam receiver in their shoulder. So let's go to the second one, an intercom system. An intercom system can page employees away from their own phone. This is popular for in-service oriented businesses where employees might not be sitting in an office in reach of a telephone. So hang on guys, we're on the last topic. So the last one is the message keyboard. This is a tool used to send messages from one employee to another when the receiving party is on another call or in a meeting. Through a code system and a regular keyboard, users can send text messages instantly and receive replies without interrupting the calls. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more!